What is going on YouTube and welcome back to another video. It is Fridge Financials here and today's video is covering three of my favorite dividend stocks. Again, dividends are when you get paid for owning shares of companies and today I'm going to share with you three different ones that I invest in and I'm going to tell you why I invest in each one of these. If this sounds like an awesome video, please make sure to consider subscribing, liking the video, and turn on the bell notifications so that way you don't miss anything that is important. Now, the first dividend stock that I'm investing in and that I have investments in is a company that has a $20 per share annual payout. It has a dividend growth of 12.93% and it has paid out its dividend consecutively for 19 years. And as you can see on my screen, I'm gonna pull up, the first company is BlackRock. Now, if you don't know what BlackRock is, I'm gonna kind of show you a little bit of the behind the scenes as to what BlackRock is and as to why I'm investing in this kind of company. So, BlackRock, as you can see, is trading at an astronomical price. It's $728 and three cents. The good thing though is with today's investing is that you can buy partial shares, fraction shares and everything else. So don't feel like you have to splash out $728 all at once. Now, if we look at the dividend section, what I love about it is that I can be able to analyze and I can zoom in and show you what I'm looking at for the dividend section here. So it has a 2.75% dividend yield. It pays out, like I said, $20 every single year. And again, dividends are paid out per quarter. So it's $5 per quarter. It has a payout ratio of 55%. That basically just means that all the money they have coming in, they pay it back to the shareholders up 55% of it gets paid back out. So if they had $100,000, which is not even close, the $100,000 in dividend in net flow, they would actually be paying out $55,000 into shareholders to keep them around. We have a five-year growth rate, which basically means the dividend is growing. We like the dividends to grow because it means we get paid more as years and years go on. So a dividend that pays you $5 now would pay you $10 in a couple years. So we want that dividend growth to look really, really nice. Um, again, it's been growing it for 13 years. And again, last di dividend was $5 as well. Now, with BlackRock, they're a very interesting company, and I pulled up some important tabs on my chart on my uh, screen here. So. First things first, this is their recent paperwork they filed because they have to file paperwork every quarter for their earnings, stuff like that. Now, as you can see here is that what they have, if you look at this nice little section that is right over here that I can't draw a circle around that well, they have assets under management of $9.4 trillion. Now, what are assets under management? That basically, to simplify it, is to focus on things about like things that they have under their investments you know so it could be cash it could be real estate it could be bonds it could be a bunch of other different things here they own 9.4 trillion dollars in assets under their management that is an outrageously high number and that is why i'm like this company is not going anywhere and that's what i want i want to make sure they don't go broke they don't go bankrupt and they're not even close to doing it I like that they also have a bunch of different, you know, investments. So they have equities, which again focuses on like real estate, focuses on stocks and those kind of investments. They have fixed income, which can be looking at like bonds, stuff like that, because bonds have those yield percentages, those are fixed incomes. And they also have cash again, there's some other assets that they look into. I don't want to go too crazy into it, but it's very diverse and it's also diverse across the entire globe. We have a lot of it in the Americas. We also have some in the Asia Pacifics. We got some over in Europe, you know, and Middle East and Asia. So we have a bunch of different diversities here. And let me just give you an example as to one thing that BlackRock has that's very, very fascinating. Um, they have been known for real estate quite a bit. Now, this is one of their real estate funds, as I talked about earlier. And their net assets are $2.4 billion. So currently right now, as of July 14th, which was on Friday, they own $2.4 billion in just this one index fund that focuses on real estate. Right up top here, it's not it's real estate. So owning 2.4, and this, and this is 2.4 billion in real estate. And again, they have other funds as well that have other real estate, so everything else that. This is just one example of a real estate they own, which again, 2.4 billion just in real estate is absolutely phenomenal. So that's why I love BlackRock because they really like to focus and they have a lot of diversity. They have of money in stocks, they got money in real estate, they have a crap ton of money in real estate. They're one of the bigger, well-known real estate um, investment, I would say, funds, managers, those kind of things. They're one of the bigger ones across the globe, which is why I invest in them and I get a nice dividend as well on top of it. All right, so we're gonna be looking at the second of my favorite dividend stocks in today's video here. 
So the second dividend stock I'm going to talk about has an annual payout of $3.76 a share. It has a dividend growth of 5.73%, and it's paid consistently for 66 years, which is an unbelievable number. And this stock is Procter & Gamble. Now, as you can see, Procter & Gamble is currently trading at $150.05, so it's a lot cheaper than BlackRock, which was over $700. So, you know, if you want to own one share of one of these, this one's one of the cheaper ones compared to BlackRock, of course. And looking at the dividend, uh, you know, summary here, it has a 2.51% dividend yield, which I think is very, very good. It pays out, like I said, $3.76. And the payout ratio is a little bit higher compared to BlackRock. But again, 63% is still pretty good. When it gets to like 80 to 90% is when I start to get very concerned because if they're paying almost all their money out to their shareholders, there's no money left for their company to grow. So the lower the payout ratio, that means they have the more money they have still to invest in their own company. So 63% is still pretty okay. Again, it's been growing the dividend at 5.73%, which is great. So you're getting a 5% raise essentially for doing nothing. And it's grown the dividend for 66 consecutive years. Now, the reason why I love Procter & Gamble is because if you look at their portfolio, and this is on their page itself, they own so many of the brands that we have been using probably for years and years and years. So taking a look here, they have healthcare. So Dayquil, Pepto-Bismol, Prilosec, NyQuil, you know, that's just one small section. I know a lot of these brands are already. You know, we have Oral-B over here for oral care, taking care of your teeth and things of that nature. We have Fabric, which, you know, doing laundry, you have Tide, Gain, Bounce, you know, and Downy. You have all these different brands that people know and they use every single day. You go into anybody's home, and you see all these brands there. Cascade, you know, is another famous brand there. We have beauty products. So like Old Spice, Olay, we have Head & Shoulders. We have grooming products. We have, you know, baby care, feminine care, family care. This portfolio is so diverse that there's no way that Procter & Gamble can ever go broke unless some huge event impacts it because they have so many different products you know, they really aren't going to go broke, which is why I love having Procter & Gamble in my portfolio. It's a great company to own and to have, especially for the long term. Now, the last dividend stock that I want to share that is one of my favorites has an annual payout of $4.76 a share. It has a 6.02% dividend growth, and it has paid consistently for 60 years. So that stock that I'm talking about is Johnson & Johnson. Now, in going up to the summary, as you can see, it pays at $159.87. And year to date, it's actually down 10%, which is why I just recently bought more of them because they're down 10% for the year. So a little bit of a discount I'm hoping for. Again, I'm looking for this for the long term, so I'm not worried about it if it comes down even a little bit more. Uh, again, look at the dividends here. So if you look at the dividend summary, again, almost a 3% dividend yield, which is also very, very nice. It has the annual payout of $4.76 per share. It has a ratio of 44.44%, which again, it's below 50, which is phenomenal. That means more than half their money that they make is going back into the business and not just going to shareholders. Um, it's growing at 6%, 60 years of dividend growth. Now, Johnson & Johnson recently just had like, not like a split, but they have their own company called Kev Kenview. And Johnson & Johnson owns 92% of this company. They just went public on the market, I believe like very, very recently. But most of this company is owned by Johnson & Johnson. Like I said, about 92%. So if you look at some of the brands that we talk about here, we have Neutrogena, which I know people use. We have Listerine, which people use for mouthwash every day. You know, we have Zyrtec. I know a lot of people have used that one. We've got Tylenol, one of the most famous pain reliever medicines out there. Uh, we've got all these different brands here. So Neutrogena, Aveeno, uh, we've got Johnson's. We have so many different products here. Rogaine is a good one that I know a lot of people use. Listerine, as I said earlier. Uh, Band-Aid is by them, Neosporin. We have all these different brands and all these different kind of products that are under this Johnson & Johnson like umbrella. And that's what makes it like a very sustainable company in my personal opinion. Again, none of this is financial advice, but 
I love this company because they're so diverse that it's going to be very hard to see this company go down and me lose a lot of money in the long term. So those are my three favorite dividend stocks that I've covered for this week. I hope you guys learned something new today. Be on the lookout for another video coming out on Wednesday where I'm going to be teaching you guys about how you can start putting money away so that way you can help pay for your child's tuition. Um, you can have a college fund and I'll go through the basics as to how that's going to work. Thank you so much everybody and I appreciate all the support as usual. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so if you made it this far in the video. Have a great rest of your day and I'm going to see you guys later.